Hey everybody, it's Jay. So today I'm taking a look at a gun that most of you have probably either seen, or held, or own. And maybe you've seen it in a video game. But this is the M1895 Nagant Revolver. Now I'm going to get into a little bit of the shooting part of this here in a bit. And I actually don't find these to be particularly good shooters. And I'll tell you why here in a moment. But it, it definitely has an interesting history. It was designed by the Nagant brothers in the late 19th century, adopted by the Russian army, and produced until 1945. They were produced in quite large quantities, as is the Russian MO, all the way up through 1945, even by the time World War II rolled around, the Tokarev had largely replaced it in active service. This one is, of course, a 1941 Tula. You can see the star marking on the side there on the side plate. Now this particular revolver has a little bit of an interesting story. But before I get into that, let's get into some shooting. So one thing I forgot to mention is this does have a seven round cylinder, which I'm gonna need every bit of to hit five clay targets. This thing hits extremely high and right, so I'll have to compensate a little bit. And of course I mentioned the trigger also being pretty tough. So we'll see how it goes. Way high and right. And I'm at about five yards. And I'm out. So didn't even hit the five clays. Another thing too is, and I mentioned this in the video as well, reloading is very laborious. So, you see it doesn't even have the spring return. If you get a good fling on it, sometimes you can go ahead and get them to kind of drop out. Sometimes not. Now, I don't think that these are particularly good shooters because the trigger is really darn heavy. In fact, even in the single action, it's so heavy that it actually weighs out my trigger scale. So, yeah, not a not a great target trigger at all. But to get a little more about the actual specific specifically interesting part of this revolver is the trigger as you'll notice has no double action to it. Now these were produced until 1918 in two different versions, either the single action only or the double action. Now, what I understand is the single action only was meant for enlisted men and non-commissioned officers, and then the double action for officers, presumably. They didn't want their non-coms just, you know, mag-dumping with their revolvers. I'm not sure if that's the, true or not. That's just what I've heard on the internet, and there is nothing false on the internet, as you know. But the reason that this is so heavy, especially in double action, is... As the trigger is pulled back, not only is the cylinder rotated and the hammer cocked, but the cylinder is pushed forward to create a gas seal to add some velocity to the ammunition. And with the 7.62 Nagant ammo, or 7.62 by 38, honestly, you're gonna need all the help you can get. Because even with that gas seal, these, these rounds top out at under 1,100 feet per second, which is, as you may know, actually less than a 22 LR. So here I have some old USSR-made ammunition. You can see the long casing. You make you think it is a ultra-powerful magnum, but when you look inside, in this type case, the lead cast bullet is pushed way down in the casing. And this is essentially says manufactured in the U.S. in the USSR, um, and then a sporting revolver ammo, is effectively what the the label says. 
So this is some old, like I said, Soviet ammo. I do have some new produced PPU. You can see the bullet is not pushed down nearly as much and the cartridge is necked at the top. But all of the mechanics of this effectively mean that your trigger, whether in double action or single action, and again this one's single action only, is really darn heavy. Like I mentioned, the rear sight is a simple notch style. You can see the front sight there. Mine was actually staked in and was hitting considerably off. Reloading is pretty slow. You have a loading gate, like an old single action cowboy revolver. And then to eject, you actually have to pull the cylinder pin out, swing the ejection rod over, and then you can open your loading gate and eject. Of course, it's not spring powered, but definitely not the fastest tactical revolver out there. But I thought it would be interesting to talk about this from a shooter's perspective and that while it might have been perfectly serviceable in the late 19th century, the early 20th century, obviously a lot of the mechanical complications of this design make it a challenging shooter, I would say. Now what you're probably going to tell me is, well, you can do modifications to it and make the trigger better, but I don't really have this as a shooter. I have this as a collector, collector's piece. Uh, because, again, I got into it at a good price, and they are interesting historically and mechanically, and the ammo is also fascinating. Um, definitely won't see much of it like out there like that, but it is not especially a great range weapon or a target gun or a plinker. So is it the worst trigger ever? It's pretty bad, guys. Uh... I think, I think as far as factory triggers go, yeah, it, it's it's the worst one. And I'm not talking just uh, just the single action. The double actions are, are bad. In fact, the double action mode is worse than the single action mode, if you can believe it. There might be other guns out there that have worse triggers. If you've handled one and have handled one of these, uh, let me know in the comments what you think. If you think there is a worse trigger out there, uh, I'd, I'd definitely be curious to know and to know to stay away from them. Anyway, just a quick video to go over the Nagant Revolver. If you have one and like, love them to death and love shooting them, uh, that's fine. Post it in the comments. Um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> that's, that's my take on it. Recoil is extremely mild because, again, you're effectively shooting a very, very low-power cartridge. So that's nice. If you like this video, please click like, and please subscribe to us and check out the backlog on our channel page. This is Jay, and I will catch you again soon next time.